Hi, and welcome back to Pittman's Pumpkin Patch, Pittman's Garden Patch. It is June 24th, 2015, and I just want to show you what's growing on in the garden. As you can see, there is a musk melon right there that, that got pollinated. They grow pretty fast once they get uh, once they get pollinated, I've noticed. And uh, I have about maybe two or three others on here. Let's see, where did you go? Sometimes they're very hard to find because they camouflage themselves in just nicely. We were looking for some last night and we missed a couple on the first path. Okay, there's one hiding right there, sorry. Right in there. And I know my other one is hiding right there it is, right there. So I know I have maybe one or two others that are growing right now. Uh, so these are musk melons. This is the ambrosia variety. And look, you can see the vines going all the way up to the trellis up there. That trellis top is probably, I'd say at least, probably eight to nine feet tall. And I have vines reaching up there. And on, on the other side, you can see cucumbers over there. <laughs> And speaking of cucumbers, um, well, let's see. I want to show you a, a zucchini. It's growing back in there. You see it straight back there. It looks like it got pollinated. Okay. And this, these are my Armenian yard lawn cucumbers. And we harvested two of them last night. And this is a brand new variety for me uh, and my family. But here's one right here. And give you a close-up of it you see these are ridges and valleys here so this is it's like almost looks like corn you know uh, corn on the cob and uh, so these are you know hills and little valleys hills and valleys little grooves that's the word I was looking for uh, going down throughout the whole cucumber and this is about the size that you want to let it get to I might let this go another day or two um, before we harvest this one but we we harvested it uh, two of them last night and I'm not the cucumber uh, you know person but my wife and my daughter do like them and here's another one right here you can see how it's uh, turning into a C <laughs> I, I kind of liken it to the crescent moon um, but these are Armenian yard long cucumbers and you can see uh, another one in there, uh, right there, growing center. And uh, so these vines are growing up way up there. And this one's already, I had a, it got to the top and it started going over. So I just kind of started wrapping it around one and then I'll get it to start growing back down the trellis. Um, harvested a couple of zucchini this morning. Um, and you can see I got a squash here growing and I'm you know it's about about the size of getting ready to take that one I have I don't know if I have any more than I pulled out a lot of these plants because squash bugs have gotten to them and whatnot and uh, but the rest of them seem to be holding on so I, I may have gotten most of the squash bugs I also put in two of those praying mantises but they were juveniles very teeny tiny maybe they uh, still in there I have no idea maybe that might explain why the plants are still holding on and still producing a little at a time it's because those praying mantises got in there and took the stress off of the plants by getting those bugs um, over here is my ashitaba I have ashitaba there and there and a couple of these little small pots and I've been noticing maybe some of you guys know what this is on the leaves here it looks like some kind of scorching that's going on from uh, we've had some we've had some intense heat here the last uh, few days and um, we finally got a good old thunderstorm and rain last night so we're I don't need to water here for the next few days um, but um, so yeah these are the we harvested all, all just about every single one of the onions I left the flowers up and this is one thing that uh, you know is new for me usually I, w I wouldn't do something like that but this is my first time growing onions and 
I'm like these are pretty very pretty flowers I really do like these onion flowers and the bees uh, sometimes come and pay them a visit and everything and I figure why not leave them a little bit of food to keep them coming you know and um, so I will be soon I'll be planting a pumpkin in there and a pumpkin in there just one plant per one of these because that'll trust me it'll fill it up over here are my watermelon vines and I took out the squash and zucchini and I have one tomato plant a, uh, an Amanda orange right there and I pruned that off very heavily to, to you know help it out a little bit I want to show you something here on, on what I'm learning about watermelon vines or remembering here is a uh, here is a Jubilee variety watermelon okay and when these plants first grow when watermelons first grow at least in my experience they seem to take forever Okay, and, and so what it does is it'll put out, you know, a uh, stalk and leaf, and a stalk and leaf, and a stalk and leaf. It'll put out about maybe four to five stalks and leaves. And it seems like it takes a month and a half to two months. And then, and it's, so it's very slow at first, but then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you see this little vine starting to come out here now? It's finally gotten out of that four or five little stalk and leaves part at the beginning of its life cycle. And now it's starting to vine out. Now, once these things vine out, oh my gosh, they take off fast. And before you know it, every bit of inch of space that you had, that you might have been worried about, is gone. <laughs> and you're taking vines and you're throwing them back on top of each other that are coming out of the whatever container you're putting them in. And you see here, this one is starting to vine out a little bit and so is this one right here starting to vine out now i wasn't planning on keeping any of these things because i didn't expect that uh, any of my squash and uh, plants were going to would, would still be in here i figured they would and so i was only going to keep one or two well we'll see <laughs> i might try to transplant maybe this one or, or something like that or maybe i'll try to transplant this one we'll, we'll just see how it goes um, I probably just have a mess of, of vines for sure, uh, you know. But I'm gonna. I saw something on, and I don't know the name. Some lighter light lightener growing method or something where, you know, once you once you have a watermelon or something growing on one of the vines or whatnot, prune off just a little bit after that to keep it from growing, so that you get your full size fruit on there. And anything else that's not really producing, maybe take those parts off. But I don't know. You know, it, it would it would allow you to uh, it would allow you to keep you know uh, things to a minimum in here. You know, and not being so overcrowded. Okay. So, anyways, that's what's going on with the watermelon. I have a Georgia rattlesnake over here, and that's my one uh, jubilee over there. So, uh, let's see, what's next, what's next, what's next? Um, oh, might as well take you over to the, might as well take you over to the, uh, well, tomatoes are, are, I've been harvesting my tomatoes off of here pretty good. Here are the locusts. <laughs> so, you know, I got plenty of tomatoes going on here. I came out there the other day and there was some critter or something took a huge hunk out of a ripe tomato. Needless to say, I was not very happy. But it was a low-lying tomato, low-hanging tomato. And uh, sometimes it's oregano back there. Oh, I see some yellowing leaves. Trying to get you off of there. Pull you out. And, uh... Anyways, um, what was I saying? I lost my thought now. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, so, so some critter got a hold of it and took a big old huge chunk, and then I found another tomato that was okay, and it was close to being right. So I uh, go ahead and pulled that one too, and. Uh, so all's all's doing pretty good overall. You know, I got 
quite a few tomatoes inside still ripening up and you know you can see these tomatoes here doing pretty good these are my these are my better boy tomatoes sorry for all the shaking and moving there's some more right there um, now my cantaloupe aren't really producing a whole lot of females and and the ones that I have haven't really set but I do believe I do believe that I have one right there in the center that got pollinated. It looks like it's growing, but it sure is taking a little bit of time. And here's one thing I've noticed. I want to share this little idea, this little tip I've just learned in the last few days. What appears to be happening on these cantaloupes and what appears to be happening on the cucumbers is this. All right, you got your main stem that comes out, right? And that's growing up and it's going up your trellis or whatever. And along that main stem, you have tons and tons of you get that's what a lot of your male flowers are and I keep looking for female flowers along the main stem and I'm not really seeing it the main vine and I'm not really seeing that at all but where I am seeing the female flowers being produced is off a little side shoots so let me show you what I'm talking about here right here is the main stem going right through here okay off of this is this side shoot right here and here, of course, is the female flower. And all that thing, and then it goes over here, and it's not really producing uh, much more of a vine. It's a little bit, but not much, you know. So, um, wrap that back around so in case it needs uh, some support for that cantaloupe that I think got pollinated. Okay, so anywho. These things are very slow growing, and uh, but um, they're they're. We'll see what happens. I sprayed hit some one this morning with a uh, tomato blossom set spray, so hopefully it, it'll take. And you can see my Japanese beetle trap that's been working fairly successfully. And it, this scent is about almost a year old, and it's still working, crazy. Um, up here is uh, those two are my um, longevity spinach and I don't particularly care for those I don't think I will grow those again don't like the texture and the taste of it. it's not very good but that's just my opinion for it and this is my one lonely little sunflower left not much of a specimen is it uh, what are you gonna do my apple tree this is the Fuji Still just growing on, not really doing anything. I've had a lot of Japanese beetle problems in the yard. They have been destroying my uh, leaves on a lot of my plants, blackberries, apple trees. They had just been going to town. Let me show you. Let me get some better lighting. You can see all that brown mess, or uh, there's a lot of the holes and everything that uh, it's been chewing on. And that is a sure sign of Japanese beetle damage right there, okay? All that turns to brown, you got a bunch of little holes. Usually what I do when I see those Japanese beetles, I just go and pluck them right off. <laughs> and you can hear them splat on something. But, um, so this is my Honeycrisp apple tree. Going up there. Um, so this is, apple trees are brand new for me, so I don't know a whole lot about them. I did a little bit of pruning early on and I'm now I'm just letting it grow and I don't think I'm going to get any fruit this year. These trees are about four years old and these are semi-dwarf varieties uh, but we'll see. Looking in here you can still see I, one of the bushes has tons of blueberries still on it and I have other bushes that uh, have blueberries that are all in different ripening stages and I've been harvesting blueberries since gosh what was it uh, maybe uh, late May early June and here we are nearing the end of June and I'm still got uh, quite a few blueberries ripening and and still even more behind those that are going to still take longer so that's fine <laughs> it's given me uh, giving me quite the harvest and over a length of time you know I get these big batches of blueberries coming and I freeze them and then a, you know maybe a week later I'm harvesting another huge batch and then I freeze them you know so right now I have maybe about three or four 
quart size bags and I still have tons more on here so I'm really loving it this is my tomato plant that I from a sucker that I got and uh, you know I just it's kind of an experiment to see if I can do it and uh, it's t it's very slow and growing the new growth but uh, it's still alive so you can see my two basil let me give you some depth perception of this or some height perception of my basil that's probably about two feet to almost two and a half three feet maybe of all two plants of basil and this is from that pruning technique of pinching them off and you know every couple of days or so I come out here and I have to pinch off um, you know the, the flowering seeds because that'll keep your harvest your leaves your plants growing longer and basically you know you just you can see right here there's a little bit of a seed head starting to form and I just come right in pinch it off okay and this is very usable uh, so oh look at there there's one I missed this morning see the flower head right there I'm holding all right so you just come on back let's see you just come right on back there and you just pinch it off okay and uh, these baby leaves right here, that I'm touching my finger there, those will continue to grow and produce uh, more leaves for you. More basil. Or as they say over in Great Britain, basil. <laughs> and uh, here are my pepper plants that I've been uh, putting little PVC pipes in to stake them up. Use what you got. And uh, this is my pride and joy right here. Let's see if I can get in there. This is my first bell pepper plant. I mean, excuse me, <laughs> uh, first bell pepper of the season. I got tons, I got quite a few others that are growing right now, but this one is, gosh, it's starting to get in there. That's a pretty good size one right there. That's pretty big. At, at the grocery store, that would be at least a buck fifty, <laughs> maybe more. And these are yellow bell, pep yellow bell peppers. Um, so I'm going to continue to let that go, and hopefully no critter will get to it. So far, so good. Uh, you can see i got more bell peppers and things in here doing their stuff. So I've um, been coming out here and staking them and everything a little bit, because even though, I've been prune, even though I pruned them, you know, they uh, still have gotten pretty tall. And they are still bushy, though, too, at the same time. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad for that. You can see over there um, my blackberries. Uh, we came out last night before the rain and everything, and we harvested a few, uh, maybe a quart bag, maybe. And we still have tons of red ones still on here. And the Japanese beetles, like I said, have been coming out and attacking these. And my CDs are still holding up. They're doing good, and they're keeping the birds away, 99.99% .99 of them. Uh, another Japanese beetle trap. Probably should move that further away. Uh, from the actual plants so they suggest but I've gotten quite a few Japanese beetles in there all right so and I'm temporarily setting up my um, irrigation system here where I have these 45 degree down angle um, sprinkler heads micro sprinkler heads you can see the blue head right there and that shoots a 45 degree down angle out to maybe about a foot diameter or circumference and um, so you just punch it right in here into your drip line and then the spaghetti tubing goes around of course connects up into there and you can buy all different kinds of uh, sprinkler heads but I find for these fabric pots and, and any kind of potting that you use if you do the, get the ones that are 45 degree down angle micro sprayers it really does a nice job. It keeps the water in your pots and not spraying outside because it shoots the water down. And where did I get that? I got those online at uh, the drip store, I believe. I got it bookmark saved, but um, hey, you can see my drill. I left it out here last night in the rain. I was so mad when I woke up and realized it this morning. <laughs> um, last thing to show you, but the drill still works. 
Thank you, DeWalt. Just to work one. One last thing I'm going to show you. Whoa. Something wasn't very happy over there. Scared me a little bit. Okay. Now, right there under that tool material, the white, that white material is tool, T-U-L-L-E. It's what they make the wedding veil material out of. And I'm using it just for, you know, temporary protection for my uh, pumpkin plant. And this is, um, oh, I forget the variety. I'd have to look it up on the seed packet. I had another one that was down here, but somehow it got damaged or something, and it stopped growing, so I just pulled it out. And I'm tempted to put one more, get one more plant growing in here, but um, I may not. I don't know. Um, I think I definitely have room for it, so I, I, I might try that. I, I, we'll see. I haven't had a whole lot of luck. Oh, Mammoth, Mammoth King Pumpkins or something like that, maybe it's the variety. <clears throat> any event um, I don't know maybe just one of them will be in here on guard duty is a lemon balm plant there and the lemon balm plant down there and I like I said I did have a pumpkin plant right there but I just pulled it out this morning and um, this is going to be my continual experiment my continued experiment with using lemon balm to protect the cucurbit family uh, from squash bugs. Uh, I don't know how much effect it's going to have against the squash vine borer moths. I think I did find one or two squash vine borer moth eggs on my zucchini plant that's over there that's protected by the uh, lemon basil, uh, lemon balm plant. Uh, so I, I'm not going to say it's 100% guaranteed against the squash vine borer moth. But so far, so good. 100% guaranteed against the squash bug. They have not attacked that zucchini plant that's over there. That's wide open to being attacked. The lemon balm plant and the oregano are right by it. I'm not sure, but I believe the lemon balm is the main reason why that's happening. And again, this has been going on for about two, two and a half months now. Uh, at least two months. And no squash, uh, no squash bug damage on that zucchini. Where others that did not have lemon balm have succumbed to uh, that fate of the squash bugs. So I'm putting some out here to protect the pumpkins and see how good they do with them. And I think the main thing you want to do with your lemon balm is you want to get it established and get it going before you put zucchinis and squash and things like that and pumpkins in here because once the zucchinis and squash and pumpkins get going you know if you've grown them the size of those leaves and the vines and they just take over pretty darn quick okay so you want to make sure that you get your lemon balm established first and um, get it uh, get some protection uh, for your plant and again this is an experiment so but so far everything seems to be working fine um, now I have two or three other lemon balm plants up on lemon balm plants up on the porch that I kind of had to rescue a little bit for my own uh, dereliction of duty. I let them go without water out here in the hot sun. But uh, I revived them. They survived. <laughs> and I'm going to put one or two pumpkin plants in here in the next, oh, let's see, this is June 24th, probably within the next week, week and a half. I'll put some pumpkin seeds, probably Halden in there. And... Um, uh, I probably will do, I have so many other kind of pumpkin seeds, I'll probably do a Mr. Wrinkles in there. Or, I don't know. You know, maybe, maybe if I'm feeling really ridiculous, I might try to do two pumpkin plants in here. Probably shouldn't, because I just like want to do like, like a Mr. Wrinkles in one maybe, and perhaps a, um, a Big Max, which is a, of the Maxima family pumpkins, not the Peppo family. And if you remember from past videos, I've talked about the Maxima family pumpkins versus the Peppo family pumpkins. And the things you want to, the main thing you want to remember is that you cannot cross pollinate Peppo family pumpkins with Maxima family pumpkins, and you can't go the other way either. It has to be a Maxima variety pumpkin pollinating another variety of Maxima uh, pumpkin. And Peppos have to pollinate Peppo family pumpkins. Okay, you got, that's the main thing you want to remember. 
you can't go out there and take pollen from the pepo and go over to the maxima and try to use it or vice versa it will not work okay so that's the main tip with that with pumpkins pepo and maxima and um, so I'll give you a little panoramic view as I sign off and I'll be putting in those pumpkins uh, like I said in the next week week and a half in the different places so I won't have as many pumpkin plants as I have in the past but I think I'll have better fortune with it. It'll be a little less maintenance, and uh, I think I'll be able to protect them a little bit better this time. And I think this evening I need to get out here and transplant out my other lemon balm plants and get them established before I put the uh, pumpkins in there. Uh, so you can see my garden here. All mixed in there are tomatoes and oregano and cucumbers and lemon bay, lemon balm and a zucchini plant and uh, some musk melons and what's left of the zucchini squash and on the other side of those of course are the uh, cantaloupe and you can see back over here there's the ashitaba and then, uh, another tomato plant and back to the watermelons what's left of the onions okay oh, of course we can't forget the uh, pepper plants and whatnot and the basil hmm. all right so from Pittman's pumpkin patch Pittman's garden patch thank you for tuning in and uh, if you have any questions please ask and tell all your friends and have them subscribe thanks